it's lookbook time. It has been a month of epic epic highs and epic epic lows. Some amazing creations and some severe disasters but I don't mind that. It's always fun trying out new styles and patterns and I'm glad that I did and I've also I have finished my make nine which is amazing. First time ever. Well to be fair by the end of this video you can tell me whether you think I finished the make nine or not but I think I have. I'm classing it as dumb. So without further ado, let's get into what I have made in the month of November. First up is the waistcoat that I am wearing. This is the New Look 6013 pattern. I have made three of these now. The first one I made, I did it as kind of a throwaway project because I had some scraps of the fabric that I was using left and I could just squeeze this pattern onto those scraps. And because of that, I didn't alter it. And I do think that I need to go back and look at the proportions of this. The waistband or what I'm assuming is the waistband from the pictures and the way that it's sitting on me is actually an inch too high. I have a long torso, I always have to add an inch of length. I think I was just being lazy when I first cut this out. I'm going to still wear the three that I've made. This dark denim one I love. There's another one coming up and the previous one is a raw silk with the collar on it. I'm also going to use this pattern as my base for my jacket that I want to make out of the Brielle wool for my three-piece or four-piece suit because it's going to be a jacket, a waistcoat, trousers and a skirt. I really really love this pattern. I just need to tweak it a little bit more to make the proportions sit on me a little bit better. But this is absolutely awesome. I'm so glad that I managed to get three pieces from the five meters of denim that Claire gave me. So thank you very much Claire. Very much appreciated. I love this look and I have been wearing combinations of these pieces since they've been made all month. Next project I tackled, you have seen, it was the refashion of the navy sleeves on the Vogue 9327 dress. I am over the moon with how this has come out. So many of you guys have had really good ideas for the different underlayers for the sleeves as well. A few of you have mentioned that a lace underlay would look really, really good, and I totally, totally agree with you, especially for a more evening-y dress. If you wanna learn more about how I fix them and the method that I used and why I use that method rather than a patch, you can check out the video which will be linked up here and then also in the description down below. I love 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 this dress. Next up is the Holston McCall's 58 Two nine. Have I got that right? I have got that right. Wow, that never happens. But I mean, actually, that does quite a lot. I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> the Patreon peeps voted for this one. You pushed me outside of my comfort zone. This was going to be a part of my three-piece suit from the Brielle tan wool that I mentioned earlier. I traced the pattern, altered it, figured that it was going to fit me, and very nearly cut into the Brielle wool. I was convinced I was going to like it. And at the last minute, I decided... No, let's make a muslin. Let's listen to my own advice. Let's listen to the advice that I have just made a video about. Let's make a muslin. And I am so glad that I did because I do love the skirt, but I'm gonna talk more about that but in the video that is coming up. I just need to refilm the pattern tweaks that I made because it was out of focus and that's not good. I'm gonna refilm that footage and get it out to you next weekend, fingers crossed. I have plans for this skirt. Now I love it, I have it here. I love it. I think it is awesome. I am so glad that Maggie sent me the, the pattern. I'm so glad the Patreon peeps voted for this one and pushed me outside of my comfort zone. This one is not perfect. I'm still going to wear this one. I really like it with the outfit that I've paired it with, which happens to be this shirt and the same waistcoat as well. But there are tweaks that definitely need to be made to this. I'm really glad I went ahead and used wearable muslin fodder. This is a corduroy fabric that I'd had in my stash for a very long time. I purposefully chose corduroy because of the nap of the fabric and the interesting style lines. I thought the nap would help bring out those style lines and in my opinion it does. There will be a more detailed video about this coming up as I say so I'm not going to wax lyrical about it too much more but thank you to the Patreon peeps for voting for this one and thank you very much to Maggie for initially sending me the pack. Pattern. I really appreciate it. Next up is the 6013 new look waistcoat pattern. It's the same as the one that I'm wearing just in the turquoise needle cord. I really like making waistcoats because the pattern pieces are so small they take such a little amount of fabric that I find especially when I'm cutting out my very large skirt panels or trouser panels that I end up with enough fabric to get a waistcoat out of it as well. I used a iguana lining that I got from Fabwork Mills. If it's still available I will list it down 
down below. I love how this has turned out. Again, this is the third one of this particular pattern that I've made. I did it purposefully without the collar on it because I want to wear it with shirts like this and I feel that the collar interferes with this kind of look a little bit. I'm planning on tweaking it as I mentioned earlier with this one because I know they don't fit me as perfectly as perhaps they should but I am still going to wear both of these and I will tweak the pattern to perfect the fit for the next iteration because there will be more. They are great little scrap busted projects so you can get these out of 60 centimeters of 140 wide fabric ask me how I know it's tight but it's doable maybe not with a fabric like this which has a nap but if you don't have to worry about the nap of the fabric then a small amount of fabric will give you a beautiful waistcoat and I just I'm really enjoying wearing them as you can see next up is one of my passion projects that I'm so pleased that I finally finally have gotten around to this is the deer and doe it's not two minutes earlier i have got that right wow that never happens but i mean actually that does quite a lot i'm pretty good at that this is the sew over it sorrento jacket which is only available with the summer dreaming book but there are a few other patterns on the market that have similar style lines and pocket details i purposefully went for very very understated almost invisible top stitching with this one because i knew that they were going to be lots and lots and lots of patches on this jacket so I wanted to make sure that the patches were the thing that stood out not the top stitching like gold top stitching on this dark denim would have looked amazing but I think it could have gotten really really busy so I went for dark blue I spent an afternoon with the peeps during one of the hangouts working out patch placement for all of these I think I've got it pretty good the way that I did it was to make up the body of the jacket so that I could start placing pieces on it and make sure that they weren't in seam allowances the other way to do it would have been to draw in seam allowances but I'm glad that I made up certain parts of the jacket because these three patches here are actually going over the yoke seam allowance I'm really glad that I've got the placements that I have I can end up with a large smallville patch up here which is all supernatural there is room for the stargate atlantis patch to go up here there are about six or seven more patches that I want but uh, the ones that I have on here did total around 120 pounds this was not an inexpensive jacket to do in all honesty the kind of theory behind patch jackets is that you add to them over time so i you know like i'm really pleased that i did go ahead and get as many of these that i did at one time but i will be adding to this in the future i have made that a little bit more difficult by fully lining this and yes this is a star trek silk cotton lining from spoonflower it is awesome yeah i've made it slightly more difficult to sew the patches on because i have sewn sewn them on rather than stick them on with their glue i found in the past that they kind of do come off if you just stick them down so yeah they're all sewn on so I'm, I'm i have a feeling that i'm gonna need to be i'm picking some of the top stitching around the waistband just so that i can get into the body of the jacket to sew on the next few patches that arrive i'm so happy i think my favorite is the hello my name is inigo mantoya you killed my father prepare to die <laughs> like yeah and then croaky and i mean they're, they're all awesome they are all awesome they're all different fandoms and geek levels and i am so happy that i've made this i absolutely love it it's brilliant and uh yeah i can't wait to wear it and then get to you know asked about why on earth i'm wearing something with so many geeky patches on it because anyone gives me the opportunity i will talk their ear off about some of my favorite fandoms so yeah <laughs> next up is one of my fails now this is only a fail in as much as i don't like the style of this dress on me i love this dress on other people and that is the reason that i wanted to buy the pattern and give it a try it's the deer and doe cardamom so i am not saying that the pattern's bad in any way shape or form i really really enjoyed sewing this but when i put it on it's just immediately knew it wasn't for me one of the things that everybody has commented on is how skinny and how far out the straps of the dress are this is how the pattern is designed and having a look at all the other ones if you google it and have a look through images if you look all of the straps are actually this small i think the reason that it stands out so much on this one is because i've gone for contrasting fabrics i wanted this to look like a pinafore dress a faux pinafore dress. i mean it's a faux pinafore dress but i wanted it to look like two separate pieces that had been layered when i was sewing this and actual sewing happened during one of the hangouts i kind of came to the realization that i would much rather have 
a Savannah shirt dress and an old gold pinafore dress as separate pieces that I could wear independently and then pair them together if I wanted to. So I have a feeling that I'm going to repurchase some of this old gold needle cord. This was a wearable muslin. This was wearable muslin fodder fabric. If you do decide to go down this route, the bib and sleeves are a great stash busting project because you really do need minimal fabric for it. I have also fully lined this dress and you know it's really nicely made bias binding on the sleeves we've got a full lining in there i know i know needle cord can be a little bit difficult to wear especially in the winter and i knew that i wanted this to be a winter dress because of the type of dress that it is and the, because of the fabrics I use and I know needle cord can stick to other things so I fully lined it. So in my opinion this is really really well made and I am going to try and sell this and somebody will get a really really lovely dress and I do think it is a lovely dress I just don't think it's a lovely dress for me it's not something that if I put it into my wardrobe I would ever really reach for I would go past it and think oh but no I've got this instead so I'm glad I've tried it part of my make nine just not for me. This is also part of my make nine and this is why I'm saying that yes I've completed my make nine but maybe you guys will think I've done eight and a half because it's not finished. It doesn't have its buttons on, it doesn't have its side seam sewn up. This if I say so myself has been beautifully made. It's fully lined at the bodice because of the fabric I'd used. Again lots of people were saying in the video that the fabric is wrong for this dress. I didn't know that I was going to like this style on me. I have seen the Maya Sota. Sorry I did I tell you it was the Maya Sotis? This is the Maya Sotis by Deer and Doe. Forget me not. This is a forget me not dress. I have seen this on so many other people and I have loved it on so many other people. I think it's an amazing pattern. When it first came out I was just like no that's not for me. It's it's nice but it's not for me. It's not my style. And then people kept making it up and I was like oh oh I think I need that. So I bought it. I put it in my make nine and I have tried it. This was inexpensive fabric from the textile center. I have made the orchid dress out of this as well. There is enough left over that mum has taken that for a shirt and once I'm done with filming and talking about it I'm going to take the skirt off of this because they are basically two rectangles and give that to mum as well. It's not for me. I have tweaked it. I trace the size that I thought would make it more wearable for me. I added a waistband into it because otherwise I would have had to have lengthened the bodice by this much, this much. I added on ties to it so that I could cinch the waist in because we all know that I want to cinch my waist. I have big boobs and I don't like things that just hang from my boobs because it makes the rest of me look in my opinion that much larger so it was just one of those ones where it's like I'm I want to make this work for me I'm going to tweak it and tweak it and tweak it and I did and I did and I did I got this far into the process in fact I got as far as making the bodice up tried that on and nearly didn't go any further than that persevered put the skirt on and tried it on again and no it's just not for me it's a beautiful dress don't get me wrong I'm not saying it's a bad dress it's a beautiful dress and it looks amazing on so many other people which is why I wanted to try it it's just not for me. I don't think this fabric's for me either. I don't think I'm going to be keeping my orchid dress, although I will make that one again. I definitely won't be persevering with this pattern. This pattern's going to go for sale. I think Rachel Lynn wants it. I'm really glad I've tried it. My make nine is complete. Even though this isn't technically finished, I'm calling my make nine complete. You win some, you lose some. Just a shame that I lost two in a row. <laughs> Never good. The next one I finished is this concoction. I actually made the dress much earlier in the month but I only finished hemming it yesterday. I love this thing. This is the Butterick 6380 bodice. The sleeves from the 9327 Vogue pattern that I mentioned earlier and have finally fixed. I've made the cuff tight enough and obviously completely eliminated the gap in this one. And a three quarter circle skirt. This fabric has been on my make nine a couple of times. It was always intended to be this pattern but I'm really glad that I waited until this point to make it because this combination has to be one of my favorites. This fabric is a heavyweight crepe viscosity fabric from Fabric Godmother. I got it at the very first knitting and stitching show I went to so that's probably five years ago. I had just under four meters of it and I just managed to squeeze this dress out. I've got a hair tie and that is it there isn't you know there's scraps left i love this i think it's gorgeous i think it's very 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 beautiful i love how it fits i love these sleeves i've had a few people ask me if i'm worried about 
the kind of like things dating and in all honesty no i i don't think i'm very fashionable i think i've ad identified styles and silhouettes that i enjoy and like wearing and will repeatedly wear those things regardless of whether they are in fashion or not i i i don't think i i don't think i've ever been fashionable i mean obviously my clothing and taste has been dictated by what's been available to me on the high street when i was buying ready to wear things and i'm obviously influenced by current fashion trends and things that are available because i will see other people wearing things and think "Ooh, that's nice i want to try that but i have to say anytime i try other things that i've seen on other people that i think are like it's never really worked out that well for me i need to keep following along with the things that i've identified that i love and i enjoy wearing and just keep making those so whilst these giant sleeves might not be in style or in fashion for a very long time and may appear dated to other people i don't think i'm going to fall out of love with them the flip side of that is these sleeves are so giant that if i really really decide that i hate them i could probably take them off and cut out a smaller more discreet sleeve out of all of this fabric because there is so much in there but i don't think i'm ever going to do that because i love how this dress has turned out so so pleased with it so happy i waited for the perfect project because this combination of three different patterns has worked out amazingly and i'm not ruling out making more of these in the future because awesome i love i, I love this bodice in fact this bodice might be being seen in my december plans tomorrow so uh yeah really really pleased with this one and then the final thing i sewed up in november is this half circle skirt now i got given this fabric by the very lovely mary i went back and found the name thank you very much for sending this to me mary i think four years ago now 20 maybe five years ago actually maybe yeah five years ago after watching the queen's gambit everybody was going on about that pinafore dress the green check or green tartan pinafore dress i didn't have any green tartan but i had this one i tried to make a dress in a day trace it alter it cut it out sew it it kind of worked and i kind of liked it but i never ended up hemming it because it was one of those ones where it's just like Meh. but it occurred to me that i could still make this into an absolutely gorgeous skirt so I picked it apart the other day and cut, literally cut the bodice into pieces so that I could get the waistband out of the bodice. I ended up cutting out four lengths of fabric, piecing those together. There's three in here. There's another one that's gone into the scrunchie stash. I leveled out the hem. I've sewn on the bias binding and hemmed this skirt yesterday. And I absolutely love how it looks. In fact, I'm probably going to style it with this shirt and waistcoat when i do the twirls for this it's lovely it's absolutely lovely i'm so pleased that i rescued this so technically this is a refashion but i'm classing it as a finished piece in november and i'm so glad that it's done and especially in time for the festive season because i really think that this bright red tartan is very very festive so yeah that was the final thing that i got sewn in november i have started on the vogue 9076 i have got the skirt and the skirt lining sewn. They are here doing their biasy thing and dropping massively by the looks of things. Ah, yeah, it's not quite caught properly at the top. It's not dropped quite that much. But the 9076 is going to be a sew along, so it's a much longer process to film that. So fingers crossed this will get released in December. That is the aim. I have it scheduled. Fingers crossed I can actually get there. Pretty pleased with the eight items that I did get finished this month. Two of which were refashions and then six were completed wow five were fully completed and then one one we're just gonna we're gonna call it an experiment and just say that i did i tried <laughs> i tried i'm really pleased with how most of these items have turned out and i'm really glad that i tried with the two that are maybe not quite so successful let me know in the comment section down below which one you liked the best and would you have persevered with the Maya Sotis dress would you have carried on making it there was a lot of work left to do or do you agree with me knowing that I am not going to enjoy the silhouette and at this point I can still take it apart and give the fabric to mum for a useful purpose that I stopped where I should I would be interested to hear what you guys think if you'd like to see more of my finished items you might want to check out this video here